morning, good morning, Abyssinia, and to the community of faith. We are so happy and delighted once again for you to stop by to share in another gospel moment in the Word of God. We are thankful once again always to come into your hearts and your homes each and every Sunday morning. This is the glorious day, and we are certainly thankful unto God for all of the blessings he has bestowed upon us down through the past days and even upon this day. God be the glory for watching over his children. I want to take this opportunity before I forget, because I look back over the month of September and I failed to uh, uh, realize and to announce and to acknowledge all of those who were celebrating birthdays uh, in the month of September. Uh, and those who are also celebrating anniversaries. As a matter of fact, Minister Trice and my 30th anniversary was on September the 8th and also in the month of September, it actually began my 30th year of pastoral ministry. So September has always been a very significant time uh, in my household, in my family, and for those of you who are celebrating along with us for your special day in the month of September, we pray God's blessings upon you. And if it has passed, we pray that it, had, it was a glorious day. I also want to take the opportunity and thank all of the volunteers who showed up yesterday for the community, our first annual, uh, first community uh, food distribution day. It was a phenomenal success. We were able to uh, distribute food to 125 families. So we're so grateful unto God for that. We're looking forward to more of that to come in the future. And we're going to increase our numbers because even with the 125 that we did, we're able to service. There were still cars coming through the parking lot looking and seeking to receive food and stuff because these are some very difficult times for many households. It may not look like it to many of you, but there's some very difficult times for many households as jobs and, and uh, hours and all salaries have been reduced because of this pandemic. So we are thankful unto God that he used us. And not only that, we are also thankful unto God that he allowed us to partner with the I-5 City uh, Church in Glen Burnie, Maryland, who is our partners in this drive. And we're grateful and we give a shout out to them and we thank them so very much for including us uh, in this missionary effort. Now, my brothers and sisters, we're going to ask if you would turn with us in your Bibles that we might go to the Word of God. Our scripture today will be found in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, the 45th chapter, and we shall read in your hearing today, verses 1 through 8. Very easy to find. Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 through 8. And when you're found to say amen, God bless you and thank you for that. There you will find these words, and I'm reading from the New King James Version of Scripture on this morning, and it says, then Joseph could not restrain himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him, while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard it. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed in his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry, with yourselves because you sold me here? For God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years, the famine has been in the land, 
and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve the, a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Eternal and all wise God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again for the glorious blessing you have given us to be able to assemble together in this manner, Lord, still as the household of faith. We pray your spirit will quicken in your word, O oh God, and make it come alive in our lives, that it will give it substance and revelation, help, comfort, consolation, whatever it is purposed to do. You know what we stand in need of, and God, we know that you are the supplier of all our needs. We come to you humbly, O oh God, and we present ourselves before you. Again, Lord, we ask that you will forgive us of all sins, that we might be worthy to come into your presence. Lord, we thank you and we bless your name. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, my brothers and sisters, today I want to talk to you from this thought. Better, not bitter. Better, not bitter. The story of Joseph includes so many valuable lessons. As we observe the various challenges, disappointments, and intentional assaults upon his personhood and his character. The heartaches he encountered in his short-lived life at this point was enough to make him suspect of anyone who extends courtesy his way causing him to question what potential may be lurking around the corner. Or how is this going to blow up in my face? And now add to Joseph's plate his entrenched belief that the invisible creator is directing his path. Yet everything that looks promising seems to turn out to be unsatisfying. In my day, we used to have a saying that said, if it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. So let me ask you today, people of God, how would you feel if Joseph's shoes were now on your feet? What would your attitude be if his lot fell into your lap. There are three persons in the Bible whom I believe had every reason to be upset for the stuff that they had to go through. The first is Joseph himself. And next there is the man they call Job. And without a doubt, there is our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. But today I want us to look at Joseph a little closer and observe the fact that this brother had every reason to grow up in his time as a bitter dude. Now, we don't have a day-to-day -day account of Joseph's life, so I'll fall short of calling him a saint. But when we look at what we do know about Joseph, one thing is for sure. Nothing that happened to him was brought on by his own doings. I mean, stop and think about it. 
He didn't ask to be favored by his father. He didn't ask for the coat of many colors. Neither did Joseph ask God to give him the dreams that got him on unpleasant terms with his family. But yet it is exactly these unsolicited acts that sets his life on a spiral to collide with unfortunate circumstances and unprovoked mistreatment. You are aware that you don't have to do anything wrong for people to mistreat you. And when it happens, some will brush off, but yet there are others that we have a relationship with that their mistreatment has the potential to have a lasting impact upon you. My brothers and sisters, Joseph's mistreatment had all the ingredients for creating a young man with a nasty attitude. Look at him, rejected by his own brothers to the point that they would sell him off as a slave. And I began to think about that and think about that. And I said to myself, that has to be some deep resentment with the potential of irreversible reparation. I mean, his brothers basically dismissed Joseph as being significant to his family. And this is another instance that could have fueled a self-consciousness and a bitterness in him. Because far too often, man will accept the same weapons which the world challenges him with and employ those weapons on others. And this gives credence to the thought that hurt people hurt people. But yet, arriving in Egypt and being purchased in, by Potiphar, a captain of the guard in Pharaoh's house, Joseph's hurt, his separation from family and home, did not prove to be as devastating as it could have been. His days of mistreatment could have continued on and even been elevated, being a slave. But instead, Joseph found favor and success while serving in Potiphar's house. And though he was a slave, Joseph was promoted to the highest honor a slave could have in his master's household. My brothers and sisters, somebody recognized his value. And now this is certainly a lesson for our parents today. If your child doesn't find a sense of value at home. They will seek finding it elsewhere, even if it's in an environment that is not good for them. You can rest assured someone will value their worth. Someone will value their skills and someone will value their gifts. As Proverbs 18, 16 lets us know, a man's gift 
makes room for him and brings him before great men. Even if those are great men of not so great character. And I believe that this happened to Joseph, what occurred in his life, was because Joseph did not employ what had been employed on him. He could have been bitter and not fit to be around, but instead he proved to be better. Joseph's story also teaches us even a good situation has the potential to go south. And that's what happened in Potiphar's house. Being falsely accused by Potiphar's wife, Joseph could have been put to death by Potiphar. But instead, he wound up in Pharaoh's prison. And this, my brothers and sisters, teaches us even when it doesn't seem that God is with you. He's working on your behalf. But still, for, for Joseph, when he was taken and thrown into Pharaoh's prison, it must have been a mental setback that weighed heavily upon him. It was just another incident that could have made him bitter. But yet as Joseph continued to serve in prison, we would note that he did not let his circumstances change his character. Therefore, he continued while in prison, to find favor in the sight of those of whom he served. Even a baker and a butler, fellow prisoners along with him, benefited from Joseph being himself and doing the things that Joseph was able to to do. And he never presented an attitude or posed the question, what's in it for me? And I know we'd like to write this off as just one of those Bible stories, but today we need to understand this was a young boy and <clears throat> excuse me and these were his real life experiences joseph was not a figment of someone's imagination and neither did he possess some superhuman ability no my brothers and sisters he was flesh and blood just like you and I. And he was contending with the circumstances of life that came his way, just as you and I must do each and every day. But yet what appears to make him so unique is the fact that he never sensed himself with a fit of anger. We never got that about him. He seemed to carry a sense of peace and calm, even in the midst of his storms. And if there is any unseen element in his life that gave Joseph an edge in the various situations he encountered, that element would be identified as the presence of of God. For we would note in the scriptures on several occasions in Joseph's life, it references, and God was with him. 
Even at an early age, Joseph had a relationship with El Elyon, the Lord Most High. And we knew, as Joseph did, that God had a plan for him. A plan that dealt with an elevation over his family. However, if we didn't know his story already, we would have imagined, would not have imagined it to materialize as it did. But just as we wouldn't have thought Joseph would have encountered the situations that he did. And by no fault of his own, and yet still, he did not express any sign of bitterness. But don't be discouraged today, my brothers and sisters, because God's plan doesn't always lead us. As a matter of fact, it rarely leads us along a smooth road. It is said that the value of human life consists very much in the hazards and the conflicts through which it is carried. Take out of your own life all of the trials, the difficulties, the disappointments, your postponed expectations, your agitations and pains, and take away all the things that suddenly called you to act in trying situations. And you take those things out of your life and what you have left is a blank life that's not, that not even you would find interesting. Had not Joseph encountered the challenges he faced, his story would have never been told. Truth of the matter is there probably would have never been a story because he would have never been in Egypt to accomplish what he did. So my brothers and sisters, as we look at this reunion, this reunion that has taken place in our text today with his brothers, 22 years later, after their doing the unthinkable. Upon recognizing who they were, like a broken dam, all of the pain, disappointment, anger, and resentment, loss, or whatever feelings Joseph had been suppressing during those 22 years could have flooded his mind and made him hostile towards them. Even though we see a little earlier that he challenged them, but yet his challenge was not done so out of animosity, but it was done more so out of curiosity to see how they had grown. And though he was well in his right to be angry, Instead, his love and his longing for family would not allow him to be bitter. And my brothers and sisters, I truly believe this was a defining moment for Joseph. For this was the moment when the picture of God's plan was made clear and Joseph was fully able to connect all the dots and come to an understanding. <clears throat> now, his enslavement had a purpose. Now, the false accusations had a purpose. Now, his rejection had a purpose. His abandonment had a purpose. And none of those setbacks 
as hurtful as they were, were intended by God to make him bitter. But instead, they were intended to make him better. Can I tell you that the God we serve today continues to operate in this very same manner. Our story may not read as colorful as Brother Joseph's, but I am convinced that's only because we are living our story, looking through our lives and not looking at our lives. Still, as it was for Joseph, God will provide us an opportunity to look back over our lives and connect the dots. I've once shared with a class on Wednesday evening, and I've shared with some of my students that I've had in seminary. And the thing that I shared with them was that one of the blessings of my life was to be able to sit down when I was going through the doctoral program and we were required to write a spiritual autobiography. Go all the way back to the beginning of your life, even before you met Christ, and began to write your biography. And then as you write that biography, you began to see how this particular incident connected with another incident and how the dots began to formulate and come together and paint a picture of your life. And that to me was a significant blessing because it allowed me to see that God was navigating my footsteps all along, even in instances that I thought didn't matter. But clearly, Joseph could see now with hindsight that from the days of his dreams as a young boy to the present moment that he was standing in at that very time, it was just all so surreal. Because Joseph's journey gives us the picture that the hymenologist painted with the words, we are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time, somber skies and howling tempests, off succeeds the bright sunshine. But in the land of perfect day, when the mist have rolled away, we'll understand it better by and by. Brothers and sisters, we seldom understand why God allows us to traverse the pain that we try. Why he doesn't intervene and save us from those moments that are so unenjoyable in our lives. Why he doesn't shelter us from the various hurts and sorrows, the loss and the rejections that we experience along life's way. Why he allows the shattering of our expectations and even the struggling of our best intentions. The dreams that we have helps us to learn <coughs> that delays are not delusions, but patience is a virtue that makes us all the better. The confinements we experience helps us learn to be content so that we are better satisfied with the freedoms that we now have. The disappointments 
that we encounter. Help us to realize to depend on God. For it's better to trust in God than to put our trust in man. The tears that we have shared help us to wash away the midnights, to let us look up and look out and see a better day dawning. The setbacks that we face helps us to build the recoil for a much better comeback. The losses that we experience helps us appreciate the gains that we receive even better. The friends that forget us helps us to learn the value of a God who will never leave us nor forsake us and therefore makes us better. When Joseph embraced his brothers with love and not bitterness, he embraced the realization that God is able to turn every downward spiral into an upward advancement for his glory and in his purpose. And in the end of it, as Brother Paul would say, all things work out for the good because we become better. So my friends, I say to you today, when life throws its actions to you to make you bitter, realize in that moment that if you would only trust God, you will find that he will use those same moments and those same actions to make you better. As he told Jeremiah, he says, I know the plans that I have for you. And when we read the rest of that scripture, we will find that there were plans that were not to make Jeremiah bitter, but instead to make him better. And so that's why today I said thanks be to Jesus Christ. Because of him, we have a relationship with God the Father. And because of him, the story of Joseph is continuous being written and the names are just being changed. And they're be written in the Lamb's book of life. That life has thrown enough at us to make us bitter. But because we have strung out and put our faith and trust in the Lord. We trust and believe that even these things that are afflicting us are going to work out for our good. And in the end of it all, we shall be better and not bitter. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again for what your Spirit has spoken into our lives in this day and in this moment. We thank you, O oh God, for the story of our brother Joseph that you have allowed to serve as an illustration to what you are willing and able to do in our lives. We thank you for the truth of it, O oh God, and we thank you for how you have watched over us. And even though we didn't know it, how you have turned circumstances that could have been to our destruction, but yet you use them to build us up, even to be to whom we are today. So thank you, God, for what you're doing in our lives and how you have been navigating our footsteps. And now, God, if there's anybody who's out there listening to me today who does not know you in the pardoning of their sins, Lord, I even know that even today you have been looking over their lives. And I pray that somehow, some way, this message will find a way to begin to permeate that inner skin, that heart, oh God, to let them know that you are with them as you was with Joseph. 
and that you have a plan for their life too. If they would just accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and the forgiveness of their sins that he presented on Calvary's cross, that, Lord, you would show them the way and that their lives would also become better and not bitter. But we thank you for this opportunity today, O oh God, for all that you continue to do in our lives. And it is only because of Jesus Christ that we can offer this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, my brothers and sisters, for once again stopping by and tuning in with us on today. And we pray that today's message will find a place in your heart and in your lives because each and every day the devil is always out there and he's always trying to make us bitter. There are so many circumstances in life that makes us angry and, and disrupts our, our, our flow and things of that nature. But I want to caution you today. Don't get angry and don't get bitter because God is able to use those circumstances to make you better. And that's my prayer for you. We ask once again, as you will, if you will stop by our website, there you can give your offerings, you pay your tithes and offerings, or you can uh, visit us at uh, our PayPal account and make, make a, uh, your tithes and offerings through PayPal or even through the Givelify app. But we ask that you will continue to support this ministry, that this ministry might continue to support you and our community. Until we're able to meet again, as always, I bid you Godspeed, and I pray that you will stay safe, stay tuned, and stay connected. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. Until we meet again.